Hello, street epistemologist. Thank you for having me on. We just finished the recording, but I just figured out one thing that could make my claim return to the 90% confidence level of changing the world with a new world spirit, a new universally logical world spirit in the next 22 days. And that's by making the final connection that I didn't make concretely at the end, which was that how does this logic supercharge and make street epistemology itself universal? When you grasp this logic, it's supposed to fulfill the people that you tell it to. It means their dreams and aims become supercharged by this new spirit. It shows the ideality. So the idealness, the universals you're trying to bring into the world should be fulfilled and supported by this in the way that you would like. So in terms of street epistemology, how does what I said earlier uh, improve or bolster or fulfill what you're trying to do with street epistemology? Well, let's apply it concretely to our own situation and not just theoretically to somebody other than ourselves. Dialectic means that you are wrapped up in the process. That's the trick. So I didn't do that enough with street epistemology itself. We should have used it as an example to sublate. But basically, we're both searching for the same thing, which is how do you recognize truth in the world? Recognition is key, whether for street epistemology or for Hegel, because the reason why you structure your your talks the way you do is because you're trying to create that recognition. You're trying to get the participant to realize the tools that they're using, the assumptions that they're making, and then the, the limits of their models. And that was the point of your questions at the end uh, to ask me, is there anything that could undermine your model? Is there anything that uh, could make Hegel wrong? And that's a great question because you're performing the dialectical logic. So if we framed the tools that you're already using the outline for the meetings that you're using, if we took that and supercharged that model you're using, find the principles of your model and then say, well, is there anything Hegel says that could complete this? Maybe there's something that's not working out, reaching people's spirits. Why aren't they doing the, the, the street epistemology uh, more quickly, more universally? Why isn't there an uptake? It's probably because uh, we're not applying this in a way that fulfills people's dreams and goals. And how do you reach them there? Well, that's what this video is doing right now. It's to say, if I did my job right with Hegel, we should be making street epistemology turn into what you really think it should be if it's true philosophy and true wisdom. And I think that just the last part of your criterion um, in terms of testing somebody's limits of their knowledge, that's what the second moment is. Remember there's three moments to logic in the talk we just gave? The first is knowing the abstract universal. So you did that with me, let me explain Hegel and his principles. And then the second one was, well, what's the limit of those principles? And when you try and think them through, do they make sense amongst themselves or do they contradict themselves? And then the last one is, if there is a contradiction, how do you overcome that? If we do point out that, oh, there's something you didn't consider, how does that still either ratify your model or reject it? And those two results are just the two results of any dialectic, that second moment of logic. It can either cancel itself in contradiction where both sides aren't true and it ends up going nowhere, which is what you can catch the participant in and say, ah, oh, there's a contradiction, you, you need to change your model. Or number two is there's a contradiction and you realize that there's a solution and you raise to a higher model, a new concrete unity that incorporates that contradiction in its right order that resolves it logically. And so basically the whole interview was us just doing the three moments of logic. And I think that if we clarify that, if the model that Hegel is using is truly universal, then we should be able to frame the model that street epistemology is using to find this truth model. We use the truth model to show the truth model, I guess, or to cohere with this, the truth model. I think if we did that as the next concrete step, that would greatly accelerate your ability to recognize the profoundness of what I said in the talk, because you're seeing it happen practically in a, in a way and in a symbol that matches your own ideals. That's a way to supercharge that and bring spirit out because you start to get excited that you're recognizing your ideal in the other. And what I'm saying, and I recognize it in you. So now, I think if we do that, we're up to the 90% again, even though we're at 80. Um, <laughs> it's pretty good chances, I think, if we keep going. And it'll start to, if we put it in your symbols, it'll go even faster. And I think then if street epistemology learns to do that with everybody they talk to, then they will start to feel the ideality and the spirit will come out in them. And then they will want to use the tools of street epistemology universally.
and every conversation everywhere they go. And if that happens, well, then we have the very spirit that we began the claim with, the new world spirit of truth, love, and genuinely philosophical wisdom. <laughs>